Hello, this is Janet from JanetSandberg.com, and you're listening to the Phoenix Wisdom Podcast, the weekly show that talks to peers and professionals who open up about their darkest moments when they felt like ending it all, why they didn't, and how they transformed their lives in order to triumph over the darkness and despair. Please remember to subscribe if you'd like to hear more inspiring stories. Hello and welcome to the Phoenix Wisdom Podcast, where we share inspiring stories of transformation and triumph over suicidal ideation. Today we have Andrea Zavala joining us, and uh, we're just going to start with her telling us a little bit about herself. Hi, I, as she said, I am Andrea Zavala. I have been life coaching for the last year. I also am a mother of two. My son is 15. He is deaf. And I have a daughter who is also dealing with ADHD. And But she's brilliant and amazing. And that's pretty much what I do. I love helping people through their issues and finding clarity and attracting success to themselves. Fantastic. I love it. How old is your daughter? She is 11 going on 25. <laughs> That's about how they are at that age. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So thank you so much for being here and being so willing and open to share your story. I just really feel that we need to talk about it more. You know, when when we're in that darkness, it feels like we are so alone and nobody else has ever felt how we feel. And that's yeah. absolutely not true. There's so many of us who have been there and know that it gets better um, and that's, you know, that's why we're doing this to give, to give hope and, and inspiration to people and let them know they're not alone. Yeah, so exactly. Why don't we start by you telling us, you know, what was life like when you were back in that darkness and, and thinking about maybe not sticking around for the rest of your life? Well, for me, it's been a few times throughout my life, and it started happening as a kid. So I started with self-harming. I would, it was like as early as first grade. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's I would, very young. I, well, I come from a family history of, they had a lot of trauma in their lives. They had a lot of abuse. So I think since they didn't understand how to handle that, and they didn't have the resources and tools to deal with it, they passed it on. Right. So from there, yeah, I started self-harming tendencies. By the time I was like in fifth grade, I was already um, trying to like suffocate myself when I would be really upset. I didn't want to live. And then as I got older, I just had a lot of issues with depression and stuff. And I didn't know what it was. I just thought I believed all the feelings that I felt. All my thoughts, I thought they were true. As most people go as around and believe, yeah, I didn't know any better. So as I got older, I got into abusive relationships. And in the first one, there was two major relationships where I had um, issues with suicidal ide- ideation. The first time I was, it was, I was in a relationship with a narcissist. Uh, it was not going well. He was cheating. There was a whole bunch of issues. I was a young mom. And I just told myself, if I can't get myself out of this, I'm going to kill myself. Once they're old enough, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm done. Um, And then, so I eventually left that relationship. Things got better. I found myself in another relationship that was bad on both ends. And again, I found myself not wanting to live. I tried to jump out a window at some point. Um, I was cutting myself again, all kinds of bad, not um, safe behavior, should Mm -hmm. I say. Um, But those were the major times in my life. It was always when I was dealing with a lot of stress and I felt like I wasn't enough. Um, Just all different kinds of triggers for it that really put me into the mental state that I'm not going to get through this. There's no reason for me to be here. So why should I keep going? That was pretty much it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I understand that. But it's interesting that you mentioned the the intergenerational trauma, you yes. know, and and how things that don't get dealt with or don't get dealt with completely in previous generations, you know, bits get passed on and get passed on and yeah. um yeah, my my I feel bad for my kids because they've got it on both sides of their family. <laughs> And, but we're aware of it now. So we're the, yes. the cycle breakers, you know, I was able to look back and have the knowledge that intergenerational trauma exists and look back on my side of the family, look back on their dad's side of the family and say, look, all of these things happened. And, um, <laughs> this is why we are the way we are. And, um, it, the, the knowledge of that really helps. Obviously not when you're, you know, five or six years old, when you're that little, you, yeah. you don't, you just, you don't know. You just feel it all mm-hmm. and it feels terrible and you don't know what to do about it. Yeah, no, that is true. I just grew up because my mom, her father was like very mentally and physically abusive. And then her siblings also weren't the best they were, but they were all going through their own things. So, mm-hmm. and she had me very young. So she already, she didn't know what she was doing. Right. So she would put me down a lot at the time. And now she's a completely different person. She's been in therapy. She knows better now. Mm-hmm. And I know that she, what she was going through in hindsight. So I know not to take it personally anymore. But she would put me down. She would tell me I was going to be obese. She went, I, went, I, ate. I was already by, um, getting diet books from the library and hiding them oh under my, my bed because I don't want her to see. Yeah, so it was bad. It wasn't the best, but she wasn't be- like a horrible person. She wasn't beating me. She raised me to be very empathetic, like, but she just didn't have the mental awareness of what mm-hmm. she was doing and what happened to her. She hadn't processed that either. Yeah. So yeah. she didn't know. Yeah. So. Well, we all, we all grow and learn and you can only do the best with, with what you have. And, you know, some people start out a little bit ahead of others. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we can say the same thing. And I never, you know, I never held it against my parents for doing what they knew how to do with the tools that they had. Yeah. And it's not, it's not their fault that no, I didn't know that, but yeah, you know, had, had I had my kids now instead of, you know, 20 years ago, I did, it would have been a whole different experience. Yeah, that's how I feel too. Like if I had, even though mine are 10 and 15, I still feel like sometimes I'm like, oh, I wish I had known this sooner. Mm-hmm. So I could, cause now I'm passing on what I learned, everything I learned I'm passing on to them. So that way they can grow up with all this emotional IQ, intelligence, all of that. And they can like live a fulfilling life and not let things get them down the way I did. I used to internalize everything so much, so yes. much. And I let it get to me. And so I'm trying to teach them, you don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. It's just sometimes your brain just makes things up and you can ignore it. You don't need to give into it. So Mm -hmm. uh, the other day I was having like kind of like imposter syndrome. I was like, am I crazy? Because I'm, I do the life coaching and stuff. And I was like, I'm really doing this. I was like, that's kind of, kind of crazy. I'm doing this. I was telling my daughter and she was like, mom, that's just your brain telling you that you can do whatever you want. You can live your dreams. You're fine. I was like, I was like, wow, at 10, you already know all this. I'm like, I wish I knew that when I was 10. (laughs) Right. Yeah. It's, that's great. Um, when you were little and you were harming yourself, did, did people know, did you get help for that or were you hiding it? I would hide it. I would always make sure I would like, if I did cut myself, I would do it somewhere where nobody could see. Hmm. And I didn't tell anybody when I was like going to try to suffocate myself. When I was doing that, I didn't tell anybody. My mom still to this day doesn't know. I haven't told. We haven't talked about it Mm -hmm. because I don't want to bring up the issue because now I'm I'm getting over it as I've gone through therapy and stuff. And she's gone through her thing. So I don't think it's necessary in our case, in our relationship to bring it up. Because it's just going to make her feel hurt for what? She can't take it back. Yeah. You know, she can't change what happened. So there's, it, unless it's going to propel us forward, I don't want to bring it up. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's a a very advanced perspective. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I've being a life coach, you know, that's what you teach others, and that's we we teach others what we know ourselves. Um, I think we're having a little bit of technical difficulties at the moment, yes, but sorry. Oh, that's okay. We're back. Um, All right. Great. So um, you were saying, you know, you, you cut yourself when you were little, you attempted suicide in several different occasions through either suffocating yourself or jumping out a window or just wishing yeah. to not be here. Um, what, what changed your mind? Why did you not go through with it? You said one, because of your son, um, on one of those. A lot of it was my kids. Yeah. Because even then though, sometimes I was like, they would be better off without me. Like they're fine. Um, but in the end it was just a change in like realizing, no, they wouldn't be fine. Mm -hmm. And I am actually here for a purpose. And even if I'm not, so what, like life is so short. And it's a gift. It really is. And it's kind of crazy. Like, I try to put it in perspective now for people by being like, no matter what your belief system is, the sun was put there for a reason. It was put like, it's there. Like, it's not by, I don't think it's by accident. So if the universe can put that there, obviously it put you here for something, Mm -hmm. you know, like you're here also. But some things that really helped me through it were like how you were saying to know you're not alone a lot of times I'll watch I'm a film major I love Mm -hmm. movies so I'll watch movies that deal with the issues I'm going through or I'll listen to a podcast that's going through it or even a song just little things like that can help you feel not so alone you know it's like oh other people do go through this and they've handled it in a healthy manner you know that always helps a lot to know you're not alone I love that. I love that. What are some of your favorite movies? Oh, some of my favorite movies having to deal with that. I'm not sure, but in general, (laughs) in general, some of my favorite movies. Oh, I love like art house films. Like I love eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. I do like more Mm -hmm. cerebral films sometimes. Um, I also like a lot of like horror movies, but mainly dramas. I love the movie room. Mm-hmm. where she got kidnapped stuff like that I like stuff that deals with like re- real situations that can are uplifting also a lot of the times like I love yeah. pursuit of happiness is a great movie yeah and that's a great true story it's so inspirational like you can do anything you want in life yeah. even at the times where you're at your lowest and you don't believe in yourself anymore there it always goes back up life is a roller coaster it's absolutely always gonna go, it's always going to go up and down and it's just waiting that part out because nothing lasts forever nothing stays up nothing stays down and it's remembering that also like just because I'm feeling low right now and maybe in a week something will happen and I'll start feeling better you never know exactly yeah everything is I saw a clip of an interview with Tom Hanks recently and and somebody said yeah, everybody loves him. Yeah. Somebody asked him, you know, what advice did you wish you had earlier? And he, and it was basically that, that not only, you know, the, the bad times don't last, but also the good times don't last. So, you know, enjoy them, take advantage of them, pay attention to them. And we tend to kind of brush off feeling good and brush off the happiness and mm-hmm. dwell in the sadness. And I think that's oh, yeah. just human nature, but to be, to know that we have a tendency to do that helps us move through the lower times and be more aware of the good times. Oh yeah. And definitely that awareness is also something that's recently like helped me through, like to get out of like toxic things that were causing. Cause a lot of times my suicidal ideation was caused through like stress triggers and just not knowing how to handle that. 
So a lot of times the awareness of just knowing that your brain just naturally does this. This does happen to everybody. That's how your brain processes information. It's just trying to help you get through life. This happens. It's okay. Because a lot of people, that isn't common knowledge for a lot of people, that your brain is just like in survival mode. It's just doing these things to help you out and to keep you alive. Mm -hmm. um, it just hasn't adapted for these modern times, you know? It doesn't know that when you're scared of an interview, it's <laughs> just because of that. It doesn't know the difference between that and a lion coming to eat you, you yes. know? It, it The fear is the same. Mm -hmm. So we just have to internalize that and take that into consideration when we're feeling emotions that are so overwhelming we don't know what to do with them yes yeah and and also just knowing that like you said that we can be triggered by stress or by overwhelm or by big feelings when, you know, and then we're just like, ah, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to move forward. I don't, I don't have the tools to handle this. And yeah, which is why working with people like life coaches um, can, help. can help. That's, and yeah. I think that's why, you know, Another they didn't used to exist. And that's, that's why not. we have them now. What were you going to say? Another thing? Oh, it's fine. I'm sorry. My, my, I'm having a little bit of technical difficulties right now. Oh, threw me off course. Um, but, oh, another thing that has helped me with it is just, um, some DBT skills. So I have, I haven't been officially diagnosed, but I think I have all the symptoms of borderline personality disorder. So a lot of the things that have helped me have been, I have this book, it's a, a DBT workbook. And a lot of the the um, exercises in there are amazing. And they really help with a lot of like the suicidal ideation. They help with a lot of like, everybody always feels lonely. People don't know that everyone feels lonely. You can be in the best relationship. Sometimes you still feel lonely. And it helps with that Um radical acceptance it just helps with dealing with your emotions in a healthy way so that way you don't get to that point where you feel so low that you don't want to be here anymore yeah why don't you skip ahead and tell us what life is like now why are you glad that you stuck around what what's going on I am very happy I stuck around because now I have seen like I get to see my kids grow up I get to see all the amazing things that they're doing. I get to teach them that they don't have to go through the same things I went through. So that way they can live a happier life and feel their emotions in a healthy way instead of going in an unhealthy route and doing self-harm and having suicidal ideation. Oh, man, and that. I also am very grateful because now I can, with my life coaching business, I'm helping other people overcome fears and mindset issues and start focusing on the things that matter are important to them. So that way they can start living a happy life. Cause there's so many people you wouldn't believe that are, are successful and it looks on the outside, like they have so much going on, but on the inside in their heads, it's a mess. Mm -hmm. And I'm really happy that I can help with that. And it's my mission and my goal that before I die, I want to get emotional intelligence taught in schools as just like math and English. I want it to be in schools because I feel like the world, A, would just be a better place. Two, one of my, the things that spurred that thought for me was all those school shootings. Mm -hmm. I am so tired of being so scared of sending my kids to school sometimes. Like my son's going to be in high school. And it sucks that he has to deal with that and I can't prevent it. So I feel like if we can get this done and put in schools so kids start learning this at a young age, we can't prevent every school shooting or every like bad incident, but we can kind of deter it a little. We can give them the tools they need mm -hmm. to like maybe put it, deal with it in a healthier manner so they're not going to school like that because we can't depend on the parents all the time to do it. They're working they have their own mental health issues 
we can't control that, but we can control what's taught in schools. Yes. And we can try to help that way. So I don't know how I'm going to get it done, but that is my mission. <laughs> so I'm All starting right. with life coaching and speaking mm -hmm. engagements. And from there, hopefully something will, will work out to get that in place. Wonderful. Yeah. More power to you. Yeah. If we can start early and like you said, and going back to that intergenerational trauma, yes, these things should be taught at home, but so many people just don't have the tools to teach yeah. their children. They don't, you know, they barely have a grasp on their own lives and mm -hmm. just don't have the the knowledge and the experience to pass on to their own children for them oh, to yeah. do things differently. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, if we can let, let the kids know, get them young. Um, really though, what I emotions would... are and how they work and how our thoughts work and not to believe them when they're telling us that we're useless and worthless and alone. And, you know, with that, we, we don't need to be here because, because you do. Mm -hmm. Because in the end, you have to love, I always tell my kids this, you have to love yourself so much that even if the world ended and you were the last person on earth, because that would be lonely, that would not be fun. Mm -hmm. You have to love yourself so much that in the end, you'll still be okay. Mm -hmm. That in the end, you'll, because you, you should, you should love yourself that much that, you know what, I'm going to rock this till it's over and that's it. So I just think that's an important lesson. And it's one that my kids so far have taken to heart, especially my son. I'm always so proud of him because as uh, he's completely deaf and he wants to be a farmer. <laughs> and just for him, like if it was me in his position, I'm not sure I would deal with it. So in such a mentally healthy way, mm -hmm. but he is so well adjusted. He doesn't think less of himself. He doesn't think he can't do anything. He wants his dreams are as big as everybody else's. And he doesn't think he can't go after them just because he's deaf. Amazing. So for, yeah, for me, that's like, wow. Cause there are people that have everything going for them. And even then they still feel like, oh, they get scared. And they're like, what if I can't, I'm not enough. I'm not worthy. I'm not this. Mm -hmm. So for him to be like, love himself and care about himself so much to still overcome fears that we all feel and have to still go after things. I think that's amazing. And I'm not sure if I instilled that in him or if that's just who he is, but it's awesome. It is. Yes. Yeah. What are your top three tips for somebody who is, you know, feeling all those unworthy feelings in, in, in despair um, to start loving themselves? How do you get started with that? Well, first you have to just radically accept things for what they are sometimes. Like me, especially I always had like body issues and stuff too, because that's also intergenerational on, on my mom's side. So for me, it was just accepting this is what you are. This is who you are. You got to love it because you live once. As far as we know, we only live once. And so you just got to take it and own it. And just knowing that you aren't alone also. It's always nice. Nowadays, it's a little bit easier, I think, to have someone to talk to. They have like the hotlines. You can go online and make a video and just get something out. Even if nobody watches it that much, mm -hmm. at least you can like speak your truth and at least get that release, get that feeling of release. Another tip um, that helped me. So I used to, for six months, I had to live in a car for a while outside of my work. I didn't have a home and what got me through that also, cause that was very rough um, mm -hmm. was just being grateful because in the end, a lot of times I know it's, it's really hard to be grateful for things because your mind twists it. When you're in that, that low of a place, you're like, I don't have anything to be grateful. Like everything is always like, Oh, well they have this and I'm blah, blah, blah. They have a car and I don't have this. You always spin it negatively. But the real trick is to trying to get that. And it takes work. It takes a lot of work to start changing your mindset. But if you put it in, that is a great way to start getting yourself 
the first steps to getting yourself mentally out of that place. Um, another one is any type of like art or release you have, even if you suck, you don't have to be Picasso, you know, but sometimes it helps just to get your emotions out. It helps to like maybe write a little screenplay, even if it's never going to go anywhere, just write some things of how, like maybe how you would like a situation to have gone just to get that out those emotions out mm -hmm. lay it out get it out of your head now it's out in the universe for something else it, that energy is no longer stuck in you and then another thing is just moving sometimes you just need to get out of the house stop staying in your room go there's a huge beautiful world out there even if you're alone i'm a typical loner but going but sometimes i still i get like when i'm stuck in my room i'm like no i start feeling depressed Sometimes you just need to go out and get some sun, mm -hmm. you know, yes. just open your mind and just relax and stop thinking about everything. You need a chance to take a break from your mind. Yeah. You just do. So yeah. those are some tips and also you know. um, meditation and breathing techniques mm -hmm. have also helped a lot, but that only came with awareness, knowing that, oh, my heart's racing right now. This and that is going on. Oh, I need a mental break. Right. But me yeah. But meditation and breathing techniques have helped a lot because as soon as you can calm your nervous system down, your thoughts do stop racing and you can suddenly think rationally. You're like, oh, maybe I was in like a manic weird mode and I didn't even realize it. Mm -hmm. So those are some things that have helped me. I know there's a lot of tips in um, the workbook I was talking about. I don't have it offhand. Um, but there's a lot of tips in there also that in exercises they have that you can do. And even sometimes um, they say, if you're like, so in your feelings and emotions, get a piece of ice and put it on your head. It immediately, your body can't be freaking out. And like that cold, it like stuns you out of it. Huh. So you can start thinking more rationally. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. The cold, like cold, because it shocks you. Like when you're cold, you're like, you know, yeah. You just, and that yeah. becomes your focus. Yeah, the, that becomes the, your focus. Cold, we, the... Yes, you're like, oh, and it's a way to quickly get your mindset out of that um, state. So when you're when you're sitting there and you're spiraling and you're crying and you can't stop. Yeah. Yeah. Do that. Jump in an ice bath or, Jump. you know, <laughs> stick an ice cube on your forehead. Yeah. Yeah. Do that. You know, things oh, like that. I wish I had known that tip you. a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I only found it through my research on trying to figure out why my head was so crazy with the borderline personality disorder, but my emotions, and I still sometimes have a hard time. They can be so extreme Yeah, that I just have to tell myself, girl, you need to calm down. Maybe go have some tea. Have, have you had coffee today? Do you need to be watered? Get some water. Are you hungry? Like all little things, all these little things we don't think about. Yeah that lead to our emotional distress. We don't yeah. even realize, oh, I just needed it to eat. It's like yeah, some simple things sometimes. And eat something that has actual nutrients in it. Yes, because <laughs> yes, that whole thing, you are what you eat is so true. It affects your mental state. So if you're- It's so many self... things that, that just spiral though, right? Like you feel bad, so you don't have the energy to, to cook or to eat well or prepare oh, anything yeah. healthy. And then that makes you feel worse because you're just eating crap all the time. Mm -hmm. But if you can, yeah, just take that little ounce of energy and know that that one step is going to get rewarded. Or um, yeah. Or if you know, you are someone that does have depressive tendencies and stuff, make it easy for yourself you know, maybe get a lot of snacks that are healthy so that you don't have to cook and you can just grab it, like open a can of tuna real quick and eat it. Make yeah. everything easy for yourself. So that way, when you are going through uh, any emotional distress, you have everything you need right there and you don't have to put any extra stress on yourself to yeah. do like to go cook, to go do this. Just make it easy. Humans like things to be easy. I've noticed. <laughs> we do. We definitely yeah. do. <laughs> And all right. Well, thank you so much for being here and sharing your story and sharing your tips. Um, if anybody would like to get a hold of Andrea afterwards, we'll have her links in the description. And um, yeah, that's it. 
Yeah, thank, thank you, you so again. much. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I had a really great time and I was really happy and excited to share my story with everybody. I hope it can help somebody. I'm sure it will. Thank you for listening. Remember that you are loved, you are worthy, you are valuable, you are meant for more, and that it really does get better. If you are in crisis, there are numbers that you can call or text to get the help that you need. That information for Canada and the U.S. is in the description below each episode. If you are in immediate crisis, please call 911. We love you, and I hope you'll listen again.